my parents don't see me for who I am. Growing up, I always felt like I was on the outside looking in. My parents were the kind of people who had expectations for me before I even took my first steps. They had their dreams, their plans, their ideals, and I was supposed to fit into them seamlessly like a puzzle piece. They'd mapped out every detail of my future, from the schools I'd attend to the kind of person they expected me to marry. As a little girl, I wanted so badly to be the daughter they'd always wanted. I'd sit quietly at the dinner table, listening to them talk about the future with such conviction, nodding along even when I didn't fully understand. When I got a good grade, they'd smile and nod, barely acknowledging my excitement. But the few times I'd fall short, missing a mark by a point or two, they'd look at me like I'd let them down, disappointed without a word. And I'd feel it, deep inside, this etching pressure to be perfect, as though that was the only way I could be loved. When I got older, I started to dream for myself. I wanted to pursue a career in art, of all things, something creative, something I'd always felt passionate about. But to them, it was impractical, unrealistic, a waste of talent. My mother looked at me as though I just told her I wanted to join the circus, and my father couldn't hide his disappointment. He'd always believed I'd become a doctor, someone, successful. Someone with a real career, as he'd put it. I remember the sting of that moment, realizing that, to them, my dreams didn't matter. As the years went by, it felt like every decision I made was measured against this invisible checklist of their expectations. My friendships, my hobbies, even my choice of clothes became points of contention. I felt like I was losing myself, bit by bit, every time I tried to conform. The worst part was that they didn't even realize what they were doing to me. In their minds, they were guiding me, helping me make the right choices. But the breaking point came last year when I fell in love. He was kind, gentle, and understanding in ways that felt foreign after years of feeling unseen at home. He understood my passion for art, encouraged it even, and treated my dreams as though they were just as valid as his own. For the first time in my life, I felt like someone saw me. Not the version of me that my parents wanted, but the real, raw, imperfect person underneath. When I introduced him to my parents, though, it all came crashing down. They took one look at him, asked a few polite questions, then pulled me aside. Is this really the best you can do? My mother whispered, her face etched with disapproval. He doesn't seem like he'd be able to provide for you the way you deserve. I felt my heart sink, a familiar weight settling in my chest. They didn't care about how he made me feel or how happy I was. All they saw were the surface details that didn't align with their vision of the perfect partner. That night, after the awkward dinner, I confronted them. I told them, finally, everything I'd held back for years. I told them how much it hurt to feel like I was never enough, how every choice I made felt like a disappointment to them. My voice cracked, tears spilling down my cheeks, but I kept going, pouring out years of pent-up pain. For the first time, I wasn't holding back, wasn't sugarcoating my words to spare their feelings. My father listened quietly, his face unreadable, while my mother looked away uncomfortable. When I finished, there was a long, heavy silence. And then, instead of understanding, instead of the compassion I'd longed for, my father simply said, we're only hard on you because we want what's best for you. One day you'll thank us. That was the moment I knew I'd never be able to make them see me for who I really am. They'd never understand the dreams I held close to my heart, the parts of me that didn't fit into their mold. And as much as it hurt, I realized I needed to start living for myself. Not for their approval, not for their acceptance, but for the life I wanted to build. Since then, it's been a journey of self-discovery. I've distanced myself a bit, not out of spite, but out of necessity. I'm learning to choose myself to find value in my own path, even if it's one they can't understand. I still love them, and part of me still wishes things could be different. But I'm beginning to accept that sometimes the people closest to us just aren't able to give us the support we need. He didn't show up when I needed him most. I remember sitting in the dim, sterile hospital room, the steady hum of machines filling the silence around me. I was waiting, every second stretching out like an eternity. My heart felt heavy with worry, but still I clung to hope. He said he'd come. He promised he'd be here. But as the minutes turned into hours, I began to feel the familiar sting of disappointment settling in my chest. He was my rock. Or at least, that's what I'd believed. We'd been together for years, my boyfriend and I, through laughter and tears. So when my mom called to tell me that my dad had been in a car accident, I didn't think twice about who to lean on. I told him everything, the fear, the panic, the need to just have him beside me. And he said he'd come, that he'd be there right by my side, where I thought he always wanted to be. But as I waited, staring out of the small hospital window, watching the sun dip below the horizon, he didn't show. 
Instead, there were only a few text messages here and there, vaguey excuses about getting held up or being busy. At first, I thought he was stuck in traffic or maybe something had come up at work. But the messages stopped coming, and the calls went unanswered. I sat there, in a hospital chair, by my dad's bedside alone. I wanted so badly to believe he had a reason, a real one, but all I felt was the hollow H of abandonment. My father lay unconscious, and all I could think of was how alone I felt. I wanted him to wake up, to open his eyes and reassure me like he always had. My dad was my hero, and to see him lying there so vulnerable broke something inside me. And it made me realize, painfully, how important it was to have someone truly dependable by my side. When my boyfriend finally reached out, it was a full day later. No call, just a text. Hey, babe, sorry things got crazy yesterday. Hope everything's okay with your dad. That was it. No mention of the promises he'd made, no apologies for leaving me when I needed him most. And I felt a wave of anger like never before, a deep and visceral kind of hurt. I thought, does he even care? I tried to tell myself it was just a one-time thing that he'd had his reasons. But over time, I started to notice a pattern. Anytime things got hard, he'd disappear, only reappearing when things were back to normal. And I began to see that maybe he was there for the good times, but not for the bad. Maybe he wanted a partner for the fun, the dates, and the latter but wasn't ready to be there for me when I really needed someone. That night, as I watched my dad start to heal, I made a choice. I couldn't keep waiting for someone who only showed up when it was convenient. I needed someone who'd be there for the highs and the lows, someone who'd hold my hand through the darkest hours without hesitation. It took me a while to gather the strength, but eventually I ended things with my boyfriend. He didn't take it seriously at first, laughed it off, said I was overacting. But it was then I realized just how little he understood me, how little he valued what we had. I walked away, no longer looking back. The stranger who changed my life. A few months ago, I was 26 FA was having a rough time. My job felt meaningless, my friendships were distant, and my apartment was small and lonely. I'd get home every night feeling empty, as though I was going through the motions of life but not truly living. One day, I hit a breaking point, feeling so disconnected that I decided to go for a walk late at night, something I'd never normally do. As I walked, I stumbled upon a small park I'd never noticed before. I found an empty bench, sat down, and started crying. I don't know how long I was there, but eventually a woman around my age approached, looking concerned. She sat down beside me and, in the gentlest voice, asked if I was okay. I felt embarrassed, but something about her presence was so comforting that I couldn't stop myself from opening up. We ended up talking for hours. I told her about feeling lost, my loneliness, and the lack of purpose I was struggling with. She shared some of her own experiences too. How she had gone through similar feelings after losing her mom the previous year. I remember her saying, sometimes life feels like a storm you have to wait out, but you don't have to face it alone. We stayed in touch after that night. She'd text me simple messages like, how was your day? Or want to grab coffee. Slowly, she became the friend I'd been craving. She encouraged me to try new things and even introduced me to her friends, who turned out to be some of the kindest people I've ever met. Over time, I started feeling alive again. I joined a book club, started volunteering at an animal shelter, and even signed up for a painting class. All things she suggested. Looking back now, I realized that the friendship we built that night saved me. I don't know where I'd be without that random act of kindness from a stranger who saw me crying on a park bench.